Convolutional neural networks have always amazed me. Their structure and the way they recognize patterns in images is simple and elegant. Today I want to walk you through the architecture of a CNN and explain the forward and back propagation calculations behind it. The architecture of a typical CNN is as follows. The first layer is a convolutional layer, followed by as many convolutional or pooling layers as we need. After that the data is flattened and passed through fully connected layers. But what happens in these layers? In the convolutional layers we pass the image through filters that highlight specific features. For example, one filter may highlight edges, another might detect vertical lines and others might blur the image. In the pooling layers we downsample the image, speeding up computations while retaining only the most important features. Passing the image through filters means that each filter, typically a square of size 3x3 3 3 or 5x5, moves across the image applying transformations. These filters can detect patterns like edges, textures or specific features. The operation that applies the filter to the image and produces a new image is called convolution, and we will denote it by a circle with a dot. Let's break down this convolution operation. We do element-wise multiplication, multiplying each element of a portion of the image matrix by the corresponding element in the filter matrix, and then summing the results. Each operation provides a single value for the new image. We repeat this process across the entire image, and depending on the filter values, we generate a new image with specific characteristics. In this case, with this filter, we are blurring the image. The blurring effect averages the surrounding pixel values, reducing noise and smoothing out small details, providing a simplified version of the original image. This entire process is crucial for feature extraction, allowing the network to focus on relevant patterns. Moving on to more complex convolutional layers with multiple input and output channels. For each output channel, there is a filter for every input channel, as well as a bias matrix. To calculate each element in the output matrix, we perform element-wise multiplication on a portion of each input channel with its corresponding filter. We do this for all input channels, sum the resulting values, and then add the corresponding bias value. This process is repeated across all the output channels. Now that we have an intuition for how it works, we can express the process using mathematical equations with matrix operations. The output matrix is calculated by summing the results of the convolution operations between each input and its corresponding filter, followed by the addition of the bias matrix. And for a convolutional layer with n inputs, the output matrix is calculated in the same way. That was forward propagation. Now let's look at back propagation. In this phase, we want to calculate the derivative of the error function with respect to the filter, the bias and the input. To do this, we first need the derivative of the error function with respect to the output. We have this because you can easily see that the input in one layer is equal to the output in the previous layer. We will perform calculations using a simple example with one input and one output. Once we understand the basics, extending this concept to more complex layers will be straightforward. Let's start with the filter. By applying the chain rule and referencing the equations above, we can easily calculate the derivatives. We can observe that the matrix of derivatives corresponds to a convolution operation between the input and the matrix of output derivatives. Since each output channel has its own filter corresponding to each input, the equation for a more complex layer maintains the same structure. The derivatives for the bias are straightforward, since each output element has only one corresponding bias element. Therefore, the matrix of bias derivatives is identical to the matrix of output derivatives. The last part involves calculating the derivatives for the input. 
By seeing the equations above, we can determine each input derivative using the chain rule, as we did previously. We modify some components to incorporate the filter values. Take a moment to consider the equations and see if you can identify any patterns. At first, it might be challenging to identify a clear pattern. However, as we analyze the equations for multiple input derivatives and take some time, we can observe that this once again leads to a convolution operation. This time though, it represents a full convolution, meaning we start at the top corner with one element and proceed step by step across the entire input. Now, we can represent this process using matrices and the full convolution operation. For a more complex layer with multiple outputs, we observe that each input contributes to each output. That's why we have to sum it across all the output channels. Let's recap all the calculations involved in the convolutional layer. The forward pass, the back propagation, and the updates using the gradient descent algorithm, which we discussed in the previous video. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you now have a better understanding of convolutional neural networks. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content.